Okay, trying to make money again. <laughs> but, uh, just wanted to show you the, uh, situation here with, um, trading multiple currency pairs, uh, automated uh, script execution for all the uh, orders you, that I place. Um, but my style is kind of uh, ha a half a grid trade, I would suppose, if you had to define it. I'm using the grid, grid concept, but I'm not getting in to both legs um, at the same time. Because psychologically, I don't like the feeling of, uh, you know, it to me, well, it would ruin the, it's very, it would be very complicated. It's too complicated. Why not just bet on the market, either not going there or going there. If it goes there, I would, would be kind of, if the market plunges into my order bank, my grid bank, then I guess I'm a one-legged, um, grid trader because I'm looking for the retrace. That's how the grid trader is going to make money. They're going to make money on retrace. So, uh, and I don't, so I have orders that would retrace 10 pips, 5 pips if the broker lets me take a 5 pip profit. I will have that peppered into the order bank. So what I have running here is just a pile of order banks. And they, these all last 4 hours and they're all hotkey assigned so that I don't have to uh, think too much. Now I, I was um, I put a pl quite a bit here on the euro dollar uh, because I feel like it's going to fill this hole down here. Um, that's my uh, you know uh, you know I would I would sell here but I'm not that guy. Um, it does look like it could just plunge in an Oroville. This broker's got a very jittier. Uh, okay, there's a tech chart on. It's got to be trading high value. Okay, looks like we're going to plunge into here now. Wouldn't trade it. I just wouldn't sell here because, ah, geez, I don't know. You know, just like the guy that's here. How do you feel about that one, huh? So it's kind of like at the borderline. So I would rather do a technique that um, is an if then statement. So if it tanks, would you buy? Well, I would. So that's my pre. Um, designed and then the order script is written in that in terms of that that it's going to take some 10 pip winners 20 pip winners 30 pip winners and there's a hundred percent retracement winners in there uh, typically a master stop on the whole bank so okay so right now I think I'm getting filled on something else here that's on um, I'm, I'm selling into this uh, this possible um, rally in the dollar yen and the indicator is not on there because I um, the indicator when I delete all objects seems to um, not refresh unless you change time frame. So here's the one hour. But um, this has been a great range trading drama here today, and um, I could launch buy and sell tickets on either side of that. But I like to stay into one. Uh, kind of high probability pattern like the euro dollar here just falling in this massive hole and then needing to retrace because oh the next session's coming or the world's not really coming to an end we just thought it was or there's people with stops in here we got to go get all those stops well I want to be the guy that's you know I want to be the on the other side of that trade because you know people that trade with stops lose right well, that's what they say until you wipe out your account because you didn't put a stop in, but uh, it's all just so ridiculously, um, you know, it's just what you can handle pain-wise, really. So, right now, if the, if the broker would let me, I'll, I'll attempt it here, um, let me uh, close some of these, I don't know if I got overloaded, uh, I think it overloaded the New Zealand dollar here. So yeah, this is just a quick run through. Uh, I got the euro dollar. Um, I set up these eight currencies, like um, presupposing anybody cares, but try to be logical about it, you know. And uh, euro, pound stacked on top of each other, and then the New Zealand and the Australia seem to move together in the same kind of way. Uh, had to go to a four hour chart so I could pack all this in here but four hours seems to make more money for me because I can see the real key uh, support areas areas in here 
and the indicator automatically draws uh, on, on high and lows. So if I wanted to go to line charts on all these, I don't have a, uh, you can save a profile in here and have them all sw roll over with a hockey. I'm, I'm, I guess I haven't done that yet, but uh, you know, if you go to line chart just for the market structure and you could see, oh, okay, you know, this is, um, you know, especially in the Euro dollar here, well, you know, it's just, it has a whole different look to me uh, in, in that mode. You put these all in. Here's the British pound on a four hour. Got a big order bank down here in case we plunge into that. Um, like we plunged into this, and then of course, you know, the, the, the bottom became a top here. And luckily, the computer is drawing the uh, highs and lows, so I can see that, oh, that's where the um, stops were. Because the line chart, unfortunately, as beautiful as it is, doesn't give you the range of the day or the um, close in relationship to the range. So, kind of don't really know what, what that is. That a, is that, um, you know, is that a uh, inverted hammer or whatever, whatever uh, you want to name you want to attach to the um, the pattern you see you want to embellish it with some pretty names so you remember it or you just you know you just want to have a uh, something that makes sense to you so what I wanted to do was uh, create a, um, a library of um, scripts in, a, in some kind of group on, on FX Street so that there would be a way that people that are trend traders could exchange um, scripts that are trend orientated or you know experiment with um, you know different um, strategies that are built into the script because I'm not going to write I could write some trend scripts but I guess I don't um, that's not me so uh, you know but I could show you how to write this I could show you what I could do a video of the edit, how to edit a script and what the phrases in there pertain to as far as when you adjust it. I could tell you right up front if you're on a four a digit broker as opposed to a five major difference. The script's going to have to be totally rewritten and it'll have to be written to the size of uh, your, uh, not totally rewritten, but you're going to have to change that, the, uh, you're going to have to change well, you have to change every number in there. You're going to have to add a zero to every line that you have an order in if you're going to go to that five. So, um, but you um, you can create, and then you also, your other limitation on a, on a pending order or even a stop entry is how tight does your broker let you get in the market. So if you can't get in like, 10, 20 pips, you're super outside retail, they're not going to let you in. If you have an ECN, they're going to let you in. You can trade in between the spread, zero pip uh, stops if you wanted. Uh, basically, um, you know, and then, uh, you, know, you know, there's the whole spectrum of, uh, but that's the uh, uh, thing that you have to custom kind of, if you're going to super trade super tight to the market, that's something to worry about. If you're going to trade 50 pips deep and have at least a 10 pip exit, if your broker allows you to at least take 10 pips off the table, then uh, you you're kind of safe. But always run it. Always run all your new scripts on a demo. If you're if you're you know um, if you, just to make sure they run, because uh, you know if they stack up in there, you could have a problem, and you could be in you could be in a bigger position than you ever thought you were just because the uh, script kept looping and and you had one bad ticket and eight tickets are good it keeps laying those same eight tickets and it gets to the ninth ticket and it says bad order let's do it over and on a fast execution broker uh, you just put about 100k in the market and you just I mean with you thought well I just put 8k and no you put 108k in or you know just some insane so you be careful but it's definitely it's worth it in the long run because you can set it and forget it trading. If you're a set it and forget it trader, which you you know certainly watching the market, you would hope it would you could influence it by watching it. But certain, unfortunately, you cannot influence the market. You can only say to yourself, um, is it too late to get in, or should I wait for a better price? So uh, if you're impatient, you're going to get killed because you think. 
ah, look at it go, or, or you're on the wrong time frame, or you uh, are buying into a plunge thinking, oh, what a great price. I thought that on gold, when it, the first plunge on gold, I thought that, I thought, what a great, nobody's buying gold, really, it's down like 150 points in four hours, really, nobody's, nobody's really, nobody's, no, nobody's buying but me, apparently, so, you know, it was a brutal swing trade, but uh, it paid off eventually, but, um, it was brutal going in because I thought, wow, three days down, that's, boy, it really is on sale. But uh, I, I just kind of uh, had to come up with something really pretty um, pretty simple. Otherwise, I knew it was going to be a brutal, um, trading would just be, be brutal. Okay, here's so the one hour dollar yen here is, is making an attempt for another high forming this triangle. I'm definitely selling into this. I have a sell limit here that hasn't got filled yet. But if it if it fills this um, ticket, I'll be very happy. Well, not happy, but I'll be very um, satisfied that uh, I got the best price um, for a seller, for being a seller. And I'm sure there's people that have buy stops up here, but I, I just don't want to overpay for it. Um, you know, if I was gonna if I was gonna be a trend trader here, it's in an uptrend, right? so we're going to buy it but I don't know it's just kind of a I think it's really you know in Stallsville but uh, that's just uh, I guess since I'm short I'm a little biased because I do I do expect a comeback to this key price level here I think this is a big deal this price whatever it is just below 98 handle which is the ultra round number here but certainly a line chart kind of like cleans up the whole you know the whole situation here and you can zoom out on a line chart without it looking like it's been smashed into a um, a trash compactor you know you can see the, the the market structure still holding up even if you go now it starts to look like a tick chart like this which is um, you know but this is would be the big picture uh, to me right here and then uh, yeah so it looks like dollar yen is topping out here if I go to the five minutes um, you know, it's just like a beautiful uh, uh, coming up into this um, bottom here. You know, bottoms become tops, tops become bottoms. And uh, I think if I could take profits, I have a take profit right here. If this can come flying back to here, then, you know, it'd be a good situation. Luckily, there's volatility. Uh, in the market, so um, Dow Jones has only been open for um, one hour and five minutes, and uh, you know there's plenty of news to hit the market, plenty of time for people to uh, run from one side of the ship to the other. But that's where all the money is in the short term. I, I I'm a short term trader because, um, or, or I'm both. I'm a scalper and a swing trader, but I think. The short term is, uh, you know, easier to manage because uh, the market is so um, spastically range bound that, you know, for a range trader, it's certainly a, a, um, a lot of money on the range traders. I mean, all this, all this chatter that some people call noise is other people's, um, you know, they're making money here. Uh, you know, keep zooming out, time frame wise, and. Um, four-hour chart that's about as big as I want to go I mean what if you get hit by a car tomorrow don't you want to be a scalper and you just made a hundred you know you just made like uh, eight hundred dollars on a scalp I mean you know I, I can appreciate the beauty of the daily chart but I don't think I'd have the patience to sit in that trade thinking I'm on my way to a hundred someday but yeah maybe they're right but I'd certainly like to to ride the little baby um, commuter trains back and forth. I don't want to take a plane to uh, you know overseas flight for 12 hours and be cramped up in a little cabin.